Hello. My name is George Berenger. I'm a software engineer at Meta. I'm the main author and maintainer of the VRS open source project. So today, I'm going to tell you what is VRS. You've heard that term used earlier in the presentation. You're going to find out what it is. Um, why we need a new file format. What is open source? Um, how VRS look, files look like inside. Um, what is the tooling that we provide? And what you can do with VRS files outside of Project ARIA, maybe. First, what is VRS? First and foremost, VRS is the file format for sensor data collection. It's really optimized for the AR, VR domain. And in particular, Project ARIA glasses capture their data in VRS file format. As I said, it's an open source project available on GitHub. The original mission of VRS was simply to capture sensor uh, data as it was produced by sensors. It, uh, it's not a video capture format. It is really meant to capture just sensor data and play it back as it was later. So why do we need a, a new file format? Well, in 2016, when uh, I started to work at Oculus, we got these first prototypes of the early prototypes of the Quest, the Meta Quest device that you know today. And we found that we had very extreme requirements. We needed to capture in real time eight streams of images at 30 hertz. Also, IMU data at one kilohertz and then some. All that producing four gigabyte of data per minute, which at the time on a fairly weak mobile chipset was really difficult. So for that, we needed a C++ library that was thread safe with minimal locking, extremely lightweight, so that we could record information while playing content. We needed that library to be crash resilient. We needed it to be fast enough for real time replay. We needed robust data format abstraction so that we could record images, audio, metadata, all at the same time, making sense of them in a generic way. We needed also a live buffer. What do we call a live buffer? Well, imagine you're using your Quest device. You're not recording all the time. You're just using your device, and you see something's wrong. You press a panic button, and what you want to record is not the state of the device right now. What you want is the stream of information, of sensor information that led to that point in time. And so VRS has this notion of a live buffer that allows you to capture the data for the end seconds prior to uh, that particular event. That library needed to be cross-platform, offer lossless compression, support huge file size. Eventually, we also needed to be uh, the format to be streamable so that you could stream data directly from the cloud, but also to the cloud, creating VRS files directly in cloud storage. All that in 2016, there was nothing that existed that allowed us to do that. Even today, it's difficult. There is even a, a startup that created a new file format uh, they published on GitHub like less than a year ago, and they made the exact same evaluation, came up with the same requirements, and came to the conclusion that nothing existed at the time. Well, they didn't know about VRS. So what are you going to use VRS for? Well, first of all, Project ARIA glasses capture their, their data in VRS file format, so you're going to have to use VRS that way. But inside Meta, virtually every device we build, every prototype, whether you hear about it or not, is using the VRS file format. We also use it for sensor, for, um, I'm sorry, synthetic data that contains um, time information. And one of the primary use cases for VRS is still today the regression testing of the quest positional tracking. So every time we do um, a, an, a, an algorithm change, that we tweak our computer vision stack that allows us to position the, the quest device in real time. How do we know that we don't regress this other situation in the dark or maybe fast movement, uh, low light, whatever? Well, we replay thousands of VRS files, compare the metrics, make sure that none of the numbers that are moving are unexpected. We also use VRS files for machine learning to train models. For example, the Quest's hand tracking uh, stack uses VRS files to build its models. So what is open source? Obviously, we open source the core VRS uh, library with, with um, API documentation, but also user documentation that explains the philosophy behind, behind the API. 
we open source uh, a set of tools that I'll discuss briefly uh, afterwards. And soon we will uh, publish the PyVRS API that allows you to read and write VRS files uh, you directly from Python. Again, this is a little bit different from the project that, that uh, uh, Pierre was telling you about. This is really about the open source VRS library, right? It's available also on GitHub under Facebook research slash VRS. So let's take a peek at uh, inside a VRS file. How does it look like? You'll find file tags and a set of streams. File tags are simply name value pairs. You may have a device name tag that has simply the name of the device, maybe a capture time and et cetera. And then you have a set of streams. Each of these streams correspond to a particular sensor and is identified using um, a recordable class, as we call it, that may be, for example, an RGB camera class. And we have also an instance ID because you may have multiple sensors of the same kind. If you think about the Quest device, you have four positional cameras. So you need uh, an instance ID. Let's look inside each of these streams. They all look alike. You have stream tags, again, and then a set of records. You will find three types of records, configuration records, state records, and data records. Configuration and state records, you will find typically one at the beginning of the file, and then data records, you'll find thousands, maybe millions of them afterwards. Stream tags look very much like file tags, except that they apply to the particular stream. Maybe you have a firmware version that describes the firmware used to capture the data coming from that particular sensor. And then records. Records have two parts to them, a metadata part and then a binary payload. The metadata includes a timestamp. So very important, all the timestamps at the VRS level are, must be in the same time domain so that VRS can sort records, make sense of them, replay them in a sense, in an in order that makes sense. Records also have a stream ID, of course, a record type, and a format version number. That format version number is really important because it allows VRS to map it to a record format dictionary that will tell it how to interpret the binary payload that comes after. How does that uh, record format description work? VRS records, regardless of their type, have the same structure. They are all a succession of typed content blocks. There are four types of content blocks, image content blocks, audio content blocks, metadata content blocks, and custom content blocks. So custom content blocks, that's for you to know. You put a binary blob, you'll be responsible for interpreting that blob of data. Image and audio content blocks, you can imagine what they are, simply you know, JPEG data, PNG, whatever, or PCM data for audio uh, data. For metadata, we have what we call data layouts. Data layouts are self-described, struct-like constructs that are um, evolution resilient. They really look like struct, and at the binary level, they are actually struct. Uh, totally binary, no overhead whatsoever in the format. But the data layout definition allows you to manipulate that without having to fear that a new field was introduced and then suddenly all the data is shuffled. With data layout, you can read old files with new code without having to care. Oh, that file was created two years ago. We didn't have that counter at the time. Or you can read new files created after your code was written. Data layout takes care of all that for you. We said that we have uh, different record types. Why do we need that? Well, we want additional semantic. Configuration records allow you to know how your particular sensor was configured. If you're talking about a camera device, this information might include the camera resolution, the pixel format, maybe the exposure setting, etc. State record are not used in project ARIA at all and they are rarely used in general, but they allow you to capture an internal state. Maybe you will want to record a virtual device, maybe an algorithm, and capture the internal state of your algorithm on a regular basis. And then you find data records. Typically, again, you'll find up to millions of them. They all look uh, differently, but they are very, very uh, common types. 
camera sensors typically have one piece of metadata fo followed by a piece of uh, uh, image data. A microphone, it's a piece of metadata and then some, uh, then some uh, audio samples. IMU sensors, all other simpler sensors are typically just a piece of metadata and configuration records are typically also just a piece of metadata. So what are the tools that we provide with uh, the VRS library? We provide the VRS command line tool, which is a Swiss army knife that allows you to work with VRS files. You can inspect, print content, export images, audio to files. The VRS tool has a rich filtering framework that allows you to select which streams you want to work on, which time range you want to work on, maybe decimate data by time. I want to only look at one image per second, for instance. It has functionality that allows, allows you to copy, uh, split, merge files, process data record by record, all type of you know, functionality you would want to manipulate your VRS file. A typical a, a example application would be, I want to extract images from this particular set of string for this particular time range, and this is how the command would look like. Then comes the VRS player app. It allows you to play VRS file pretty much like uh, any multi-stream video would look like. It plays audio as well. You can see the frame metadata uh, on top uh, of the image if you choose so. It has all kinds of functionality that allows you to um, change the orientation of the images, uh, reorder them, save presets, all these type of things. You can play frame by frame or just play the, the video. And uh, it also allows you to save image data directly from the user interface. So that's a very convenient way to just get images out of your VRS file. So what can you do with VRS? Well, first, you're going to, uh, if you're using the ARIA device, so the project ARIA glasses, uh, you will probably want to use the ARIA data tools that Pierre was talking about. So you probably won't be using the VRS open source library directly. The ARIA data tools is built on top of the open source project, okay? But if you want to record your own device, if you have your own you know, application, you can use the VRS open source project for that. If you have tough requirements, that would be a great reason to use the VRS library. But also, the VRS library is a very lightweight, simple library with no complicated build system, no pre-processing of any kind, and if you use Roseback, for example, that might be compelling enough uh, to just use VRS instead. And with that, you're gonna be able to record, I don't know, USB traffic, TCP IP traffic, keyboard information, anything that has time in it will probably be a good use case for VRS. Again, VRS is open source on GitHub at uh, VRS, um, I'm sorry, Facebook research slash VRS, where you'll find all the uh, uh, the documentation, including how to use the, 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 the API, and you can communicate with us through this open source project, uh, filing tickets and, and is uh, tracking issues, and we'll, we'll respond to you. And now, let's have questions. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. It's a very impressive new device and a very, very impressive uh, all the tools providing. Um, I just have a one question about the VRS. It seems to be a very high performance library that can be generalized to all of the like uh, sensor serialization and the formatting. I'm wondering if you have a comparison with like existing data serialization, such as portal buffer, flat buffer, and some performance comparison with them. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, the, the, the main attraction of the, the VRS file format there is that it's going to be really working like a struct. You're really describing, there is no pre-processing of any kind. Um, you just write C++ code and, and it'll just work out of the box. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not going to get into a, an actual description uh, feature by feature. And you know, in some ways, you, 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 you may disagree that uh, data layout, which is the particular layer that allows the, this format abstraction, uh, needed to be built. But we really built this because at the time, we wanted you know, all these things about the library and, and the portability. We wanted to be able to embed the library in any environment. And that, you know, from the top may, meant that we didn't want to use any complicated um, uh, open source library that were available. 
Uh, this was also in 2016, so uh, you know there was uh, a lot more uh, difficulties and constraints uh, at the time. But really, it's a super convenient way because you just um, create a struct, and then you say, this is a struct I want, and it's going to tell you field by field if the field is available. If it's there, it's there. Um, if you just get a value without checking, you'll get a default value for that type. right? And, and it's, it's just extremely safe to use. That's, that's how it's been designed. And no build system. <laughs> yeah, great question. Thank you. If you have uh, you know, more suggestions on things that you'd like to see in the data set, uh, you know, contact us on uh, projectariadataset at, at fp.com uh, with uh, new ideas. OK, more questions? Yeah, go ahead. So in your file system, uh, VRS, is there any space for tips? So VRS is really a, a generic file format. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do everything, all these type of applications. You will have to define it yourself and oh. manage it yourself, right? It's really a data container. OK, just put it at the custom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, custom. We, there is an enum that allows you to, to choose a class, and it has a name that's all okay. there is, okay. <laughs> literally all there is.